here are stuff that grows on roofs, right? So give me a thumbs up if you've ever seen black streaks on a roof. It's so common. What is that? That is algae. Yes, the stuff that grows in your fish tank, right? It's, I don't know if it's the exact same thing, but it is actually black algae growing on the roof. I have no idea how that works. Again, I'm not a scientist, um, but there it is, right? So a lot of times you'll have, and usually contractors won't say anything about this because they know what it is, but homeowners, they'll be standing in the front yard with you and they'll be like, well, you know, we thought everything was fine, but then we came out here over the weekend and our neighbor, he pointed up there and said, look at all those black streaks, that's hail damage. And you're like, oh, well, actually, sir, that is actually... Believe it or not, it's, you're going to love this. That's actually algae growing on your roof. It's not something that was caused by the storm. Well, we never noticed it before. Well, this is a tough one to answer because you have to be – basically, the truth is, is that most people don't look at their roofs, right, until – it's like you never look at all the purple – uh, Impalas driving down the road until you buy a purple Impala and then every third car is a purple Impala, right? You just you just didn't notice it before. Um, this algae grows on shingles. Um, they do make uh, AR shingles, algae resistant, right? Um, I don't know how good those are at actually being algae resistant. It may be that they have a little bit of zinc or some kind of a something in the granular layer, which is where this is this is growing, um, that inhibits the growth. And the way they figured that out, well, probably scientists figured that out, but the way I figured it out was is that I noticed that a lot of galv this is a galvanized painted vent, right? You can see it's a galvanized vent, which has zinc in it, right? Right below this vent, it is pristine, clear, no streaks, no black, no nothing growing on it, right? Same thing with this. Those are galvanized vents. You got a galvanized chimney flashing. Uh that's a lead, looks like a lead pipe jack. Maybe lead does it too. But it's zinc, right? Uh, it's probably the main ingredient that inhibits bacterial growth. You guys, anybody ever taken Zycam, right? Zycam is zinc. It, in, it inhibits or does something to inhibit, inhibit the bacteria or the whatever's ability to like stick to your throat lining, right? And so it can't propagate and grow, which is the same thing that happens here. They even make a product if you don't have an ar or an algae resistant shingle they make a product um, that you can install up underneath the top course of shingles and it's just a, a flat piece of zinc right four inches or six inches long or wide or whatever and a big roll and they just slide it up underneath the shingles and every time it rains right you can tell the water runs down the roof and when it hits that vent it is collecting zinc or whatever to itself and it runs down the, the rest of the shingle and nothing grows there. This is what that does. Kind of crazy. Um, very important. This is the picture on the right hand side is got algae on it, right? The black uh, or the kind of the dark color there, the little white spots. It says here, not hail, but I'm gonna argue that it's probably not hail. You can absolutely have hail big enough to cause damage like this over here on a uh, slope that's got algae on it, and it's you're going to see hits. They're going to be hits. I could would might look at that spot right there and say that kind of looks like a hail hit to me. I'd have to get up there and touch it, right? But it makes it kind of in a lot of cases a lot, a lot easier to look for hail on a slope when it's got a lot of algae on it because you just go straight to the white spots and stick your thumb in there, your finger and poke at it and say, is there loose granules, is, is this soft, right? Kind of makes it easy. But again, contractors will go up there um, and you know, homeowners can see this from the ground too and they're gonna be like, well, I mean, I don't understand, well, there's all those white spots and then you have to explain algae and then you, you know, after you, hopefully after you've inspected it, you know, you, before you inspect it, you might say, well, you know, that is algae, explain the whole algae thing. What's happening here is the hail comes down and it knocks, it makes basically a little clean spot on the shingle, right? It knocks the algae off of there. And there may or may not, sir, there may or may not be a hail impact. The shingle may or may not be damaged. It's, it's, it 
makes a little clean spot on the shingle line. There, there could be a hail hit there. I'm going to go up there and check it out. And if you've got, if there's, you know, bruising on the shingle, if they're damaged, we'll absolutely take care of it for you, no problem. All right, that's, that's kind of how that's going to go. The other thing is, is one other thing that you can have that grows on roofs is moss, right? Our old friend, Mr. Moss, or Miss Moss. I don't know, maybe it's, oh, it doesn't have a gender, who knows? Moss, right? Um, it grows on shingles. It grows on anything, obviously, but it's it's little like roots systems in the moss will kind of like sort of insinuate themselves down into the granular layer. A lot of the time where you'll see moss is underneath a tree. You may have a tree, a great big old oak tree or a maple tree or an elm tree or whatever kind of tree hanging over this corner of the, the of the front or back side of the roof, right? And it's cool under there. It doesn't get any direct sunlight hardly at all, except in the winter time. And it's it's moist and damp under there because the trees, you know, trees are kind of, you know, things are, they, they kind of like, I don't know, they exude some, they expire moisture a little bit. Um, so that this area here is going to be ripe for growing moss. So what if there was one place, one huge and expanding library of property claims, adjusting training videos, showing you how we do what we do? What if there were also complete Xactimate certifications, as well as the latest and most up-to-date Xactimate mobile training? It's real and you can get started for free, binging all the desk and field claims, adjusting training vids you can stand right now at adjustertvplus.com. Think of it kind of as a virtual ride along. What happens is often is that somebody cuts the tree down or, you know, the store, a storm, probably, a, you know, not immediately associated with the hailstorm that you're working necessarily because it takes a little bit of time for this stuff to die. Tree falls down, gets cut down, whatever's gone, right? So now no longer is there a tree hanging over this part of the roof and the, it, the moss, if it's, on the front slope facing the south and it's getting that direct sunlight it's going to kill it right or if a homeowner gets sick of looking at the moss and they think it's ugly and they hire somebody to come out and spray it and kill it what can happen is that because the little root system of the moss kind of like grew down into the, the granular layer when it dries and falls off it pulls some granules with it and it makes spots this is not hail damage this is moss damage right and the way that you know is you take your little finger, your little adjust your finger, and you touch it. And if it's not soft, if it's like, and there's no loose granules at all, which there won't be, and it's like it feels kind of hard, to, hard edged, and like you know, there's zero softness, there's no bruising, you can't, it doesn't feel like the matting itself was, is any more, you know, dentable or pushable with your finger than a clear spot right next to it. If you don't feel that softness, it's not a hail hit. That's what you're after. It looks like hail, right? I said we're going to look at stuff that look like hail. This looks like crazy hail, but it might only be, and the number of times this has happened is a lot, and a 100% correct every single time. You know, I'll say, well, you know, there was probably, a, I'll be standing up here with a contractor looking at this, and it's only on this corner, right? It's only on the front corner of the roof, right? The rest of the roof up here is fine. But all this stuff died and fell off, and it looks like this now, right? Well, how can you explain that? Well, I and I'll, I haven't ever I never took a monetary bet, but I should have because I would have won. I I would say, well, let's walk to the edge of this and look over the edge, and I bet you know I'm going to bet you that there's a stump right here, or where clearly there was a tree before, and 100% of the time, guaranteed there was a stump there. The tree got cut down within the last season. Right, killed the algae. The algae died, fell off. You dried up, fell off, or got cleaned off, and left this. Right, same thing happens with algae. Algae is a slightly different critter from moss, but same basic concept. Uh, moss, you know, looks like what what you're you're thinking of when you think of moss. It's green, right? It's little puff balls. Algae is more like stuff that you see on rocks, right? It's kind of like flat, it's crusty, you know. Same thing happens here, right? This is this is uh, moss, or I'm sorry, lichen on the left, and then on the right hand side is lichen that was cleaned off, 
and left all and basically ruined the roof, right? Or made it look like it's got hail damage on it. You can't pay for that, right? Unless it's and you, 100%, you're going to get on a roof that's got lichen all over it or moss or and it has all this this stuff and also has hail damage. Total the roof, you're you're good to go, right? Don't don't even need to care what this this is. The only thing I care about is whether it's hail damage or not. I don't care what the rest of the roof looks like. This is all that matters, right? So, but this is what it looks like. You might get up on the roof that they cleaned all of the stuff on the left off, and you're looking at it, the whole roof looks like this. If there's no soft spots, sorry, can't pay for it. It's it's algae, and guaranteed you're gonna see a stump or two up next to the house. Maybe the stump was starting to like grow into the foundation or something, you know, whatever. And they they cut it down and pulled the stump out. You can still tell if there was a there was a um, a tree there or not which we will look at here, how I know that. So this picture I'm gonna show you is another thing that you'll see um, that indicates that there was a tree, right? You're gonna have contractors tell you that this is wind damage. <clears throat> I'm gonna argue that it's not for a couple of reasons. At least if it is, it wasn't associated with this storm. Um, but a lot, this is probably but possibly more likely from a tree limb that was brushing the, the roof right here a bunch. And it kind of knocked these shingles off or wore these shingles off, right? Um, you can see, you know, the mid tree may be gone, right? But you, you might be able to see that there's uh, scratches and scrapes and kind of like a, a fan pattern on the shingles where the tree limb over the five or 10 or 20 years was just kind of rubbing on the shingles and it, and it may have rubbed this off. That may or may not be the case here, it's hard to tell, but I'm seeing like light gray edges, right? This mat, this matting right here is almost white. And if it's felt, it should be black, right? Fresh felt. If, it, if you just pulled, if you pulled the rest of the shingles up, it's gonna look like that. Fresh wind damage looks, is gonna look like that, right? So wind damage can be found with almost any kind of weather event. Learn how to properly identify wind damage to composition and wood shingles in this next video.